Good afternoon. And how's everybody? Can we stand, please? Who's bringing the casket in? Can you bring them bring the furniture down here, please? Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, we just thank you. We give you praise, Lord. We glorify you. We magnify you. We exalt you, Lord. Father God, as you bring this sister, this mother, this grandmother, and this great grandmother, you bring her to, you, to us, dear Lord. And Father God, this afternoon, we return her to you, dear Lord. Father God, for the time she has spent with us, we give you thanks and praise. Father God, for all what you have done, we thank you. Let us pray. Mighty God, mighty Heavenly Father, we give you all the glory, the honor, the thanks, and the praise, dear Lord, for the time that Mommy has spent with us, dear Lord. It was a sweet time, dear Lord. And Father God, as she go, we want to keep in our heart, in our heart, the good things and all the things that she had went through with us, dear Lord. Because she raised us from nothing, dear Lord, to where we are right now, dear Lord. Each one of us, from the grand and the great grand, she had raised us up, dear Lord. And Father God, it wasn't for you. You did it all, dear Lord. You give her the strength, the courage, the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding, dear Lord, to bring us this far. And now, dear Lord, this afternoon we return her body back to the earth, and I know without a shadow of a doubt, she's in your presence. She's in the arms of Abraham, dear Lord. So, Father God, touch and bless each and every one here. As they go the different ways after this service, dear Lord, they remember her and the type of life she lived. She always said, pray, pray, pray. So, Father God, we give you all the glory, honor, thanks, and praise. Father God, we magnify you. We exalt you, Lord. In no other name but in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen, amen and amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You all may have your seats, please. Thank you. I'd like to call on Sister Sarah. To do the worship, please. You know, when Mammy was around, she was a lively woman. Let's put our hand to Sister Sarah. Please, thank you, thank you. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, the blood is on the sheet, so you all can follow and make a joyful noise. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, oh what a fullness of glory divine, hear us salvation, purchase of God. Praise 
Lord, we will never get weary yet. Because every day, oh Lord, thank you. I can't stop praising him. He brought me this far and I know he's going to carry me further. And like he took mommy and she now, she's in Abraham's bosom now. So we will continue praising him. And at this time, I'd like to call on a brother to, to read to this scripture verse. Sister Campbell. Brother Campbell. Sister, Sister Campbell. Campbell. Okay, I'm excusing. Sister Campbell. good in store for all of us. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, get to know Him. He have a plan for you. And where He want to take you, you can take yourself. He has to take you. Amen? Amen. Okay. Sister Sarah, we love you singing. Amen. And we want you to come back again and give us a special. So this is, this is what she did yesterday. It was good. It was very good. But this is what she come and do. was excellent. Sister Sarah, put your hand together for us. song for all the ones that are grieving right now and it's quite all right, all right to cry don't hold it in it's quite all right to cry that's the only way you can release what when you lose a loved one and this song is dedicated to you all to bring some sort of comfort it's not something that is going to leave you at the wayside in a hurry but it will bring you some sort of comfort. What a day that will be when my Jesus I will see when I look upon his face the one Peace 
she grew up in Corus and moved to Marathas, where she met the love of my life, my deceased grandfather Lena. So, and have ten children. Rosie was the daughter of Colonel Casido and Catherine Casido deceased. Every morning she would get up very early to pray, put on the buster, sweep the yard, and then clean the house. She loved sitting in the gallery, looking out and greeting everyone that passed by. If you know, you know Rosie Ali had been too. I'm sure we all come up with one. Granny would always tell a story about her younger life and always give her that back. Whenever Granny talked to her, she would always tell us about how about her mother and how beautiful she was. She would also tell us to cherish her parents and to love them. Granny was a strong woman who was very kind hearted and caring to others. She was a woman who was a woman. One of the stories Granny told us when she was younger, she saw her faith, but not knowing it was a twin faith. She then writes on it, <laughs> swallowed and choked. She then showed us the slow side that she was choking. Her sister pulled her back and it came out. Her response was, ah. <laughs> I will never forget the smile Granny had on her face when one of her grandchildren would come to lie with her. Granny would always put others before herself. And that is what always makes her happy. We miss you a lot, but we know you're no longer in pain, and you're in a better place now. Keep looking down on us, friend. She was both steady and she had A friendly smile, a casual touch, these are the things that mean so much. Thank you for being with us in our time of sorrow. One but not forgotten, forever in our hearts. Amen. At this time, the floor is open, and anybody wants to get that open, a tribute to Granny, you are welcome to come forward, please. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, pleasant good evening to each and every one. You know, since my mother passed away on Sunday, I stood home and do some reflection. Um, there are some things that I came up with. I was told when I was young, I was very fragile very sick and my father did pray for me because I had lost a brother before and I grew up, I used to suffer with high blood pressure as a touch the nose, blood like a pipe and they prayed for me and as I grew, I grew in strength I grew, grew, literally grew that thing they call high blood pressure and that thing they call hemorrhaging. And it's right in this very sad church. As I went through my life, as most young men, trying the girls, trying the party, I came and I accepted the Lord at the age of 21 years of age. And I started here, started here, and I spent most of my life, this year I'm going to be 60 years of age, I spent most of my life serving God. Amen. And I thank God today because we were very poor, but we grew up with discipline, we grew up 
with respect and we grew up with honesty. And I thank God that through the little words that my mom gave me, as the Bible tells us, my son listened attend unto my instructions. We find that in Ecclesiastes, in Solomon, all these books you're going to find that. And I thank God today, it brings joy in my heart, knowing that I have spent so much years in this church, and my mom literally looked at me as a pastor. I am not, but she looked at me as a pastor. And whenever there is a problem, she will call me and she will tell me, pray for me. And while I'm praying, I will see the power of God upon her life. And she will cry. And to see today is a funeral she born and got a Roman Catholic. And to see today, my mom is getting her send off in the very said church that I spent 38 years in. It shows the wisdom of God. God promised that he would grant us the desire of our heart. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And his ways is about our ways. And so I thank God today as you look around and you see the amount of people that is here today. It shows the kind of life that she lived. She was not perfect, as you are here in the eulogy among us. But she was genuine in her heart. Whenever she gave you advice, it came from her heart. And I thank God for my mom today. And one thing she would have wanted all her children to do is to serve the Lord. And this is why we will give her a wish. This is what she wants for every one of us. And so I thank God today for my mother. You know, she, have, she never neglected none of us, even long, while, while she was ailing each day. She will ask questions, when she don't see one. You will see this one, you will see that one, and this is how she was calling. And so I thank God today that I know without a shadow of a doubt that my mother go on to be with the Lord. And I hope the same could be said for each and every one of us today. Amen. 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 Yes, again, again. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone. My name is Anne Marie. And hmm, standing here is a blessing for me. 27 years ago, I accepted the Lord in this church. Um, I came to know Mama Rosie as part of the family, you know, and um, one of the things I admire about Mama Rosie is that she's a woman of foundation and principles. No matter what to do, who is wrong, who is right, she always reminds us, in-laws, daughters, sons, grandchildren, everyone, you know, to always think about God first, don't keep nobody in your heart. And one of the challenges I had when I became a part of the family was with my relationship with my mom. And she would always say, Anne-Marie, still pray for your mother, is your mother. And one of the things that stand out to me, she said, don't look at me as just somebody, no, you know, here is a mother, to look at her as a mother. And I want to say I'm very blessed and happy to see each and everyone. I may not know all the great grands, but to see the foundation and the legacy she left with each and everyone, my admission is to you all, by name you all know yourselves. Please keep that legacy alive. Always work together in harmony. Remember today when everybody go back to their respective homes, the voice of, of hearing her voice, remembering her memory will bring me tears. But know that with God, all things are possible and He will comfort each and every one of your hearts. And one of the key foundations to the text, I may not remember it, is that she's no longer in pain. You know, there will be no more tears, no more pain. She's in a better place. You know, so I just want to say thanks to every one of the family that had a hard part in you know seeing her to the end you know that you all did an excellent job as a family and i want to commend you all for that so may god bless each and every one of you
Good afternoon to each and every one. Thank you all for coming here today to celebrate the life of my mom. I am Margaret Bidaram. My husband passed away. But every day, I take this taxi and go down to my mom's home. And she will tell me, she will tell me, Margaret, what are you doing today? You all right? You good? I will turn to her and say, yes, mom. Said, you eat? I will say, mom, why are you asking that question? You always thinking about us, but you wouldn't think about yourself. I said, if I said I'm hungry, what will you do about it? He said, I'll buy you a cake. <laughs> <laughs> and she always tell me, man, you want coffee? Go in the kitchen and make some coffee. I would say, mom, it's not too hot to drink coffee right now. <laughs> but I turn out for my mom, because she stand up with us, hand us off. She always there for us. She always tell us, you all must pray and let go with one another. And right now, she's going to, to Jesus. I thank God for all what she has done for us. I thank God for my dad who born before. And let God bless her and rest her in peace Amen. for all the goodness she has done. Sometimes she run away and come by me. And when I look down the hill and see her coming, I put the water on the fire to boil. So make sure and cook her food for her. And she will sleep by me. And then she'll pick up her little bag and say, I'm going home. And I say, why are you going to stay with me? No, I'm going to see about them long there. <laughs> so right now, she's in this here. May God rest her soul in peace. And one day again, we'll see her in glory. Amen. 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 Is there anybody else? Okay, no one else. At this time, I'd like to call on Reverend Hector to bring this to bring a word for us, please. A word that we need in this time. Let us put our hands together for Reverend Hector. Well, since you return on Reverend Hector, I like this something about this lady right here. She becoming like a mother to me when her granddaughter introduced her to me. And I adopted her like my mom. And when any celebration, she calls her, call Brother Leon. And I used to go down there and we pray. We have a good time. And she was the life of the little time we have together. You know, it has nothing negative I can say about this lady. Everything is something good, because she will make you laugh. She will make you enjoy the few minutes that you spend there in her presence. And her main issue was prayer. The most important thing, are you walking with the Lord? Are you doing what God has called you to do? She, want, she wanted to lead you in a path that you will heed God hearing. And I will cut what I have to say, Reverend Hector. Praise God. Pleasant good evening to you all. It's truly a privilege to be here uh, before you uh, to celebrate this life. You know, it's truly... Um, I know that in time of death, that it's a sorrowful time. But the reality is that it's based on how we would have lived our life. That is what we have to take any sort of um, um, comfort in. But the reality is this also, is that one day, all of us would be in uh, that particular place where she is right now. And every one of us, we are going back to the earth and then not just remaining there, but we are going to meet our maker. So it's based on how we live our life, 
but we, we determined where we would um, spend our time of eternity. Amen. Praise God. So I'm Reverend Hector, um, the pastor of the Revival Center that is um, higher up the road, that's Royal Road. Um, upstairs, the old police station, I think most of you already know the old police station higher up there. Uh, we were at in Akuno at one point in time, but now we are up in um, Royal Road. Amen. The reason why I'm here this evening before you is that um, I have a special friend, a good friend. You know, you have some friends you don't really talk much to or much with, but they're still your friend, right? Amen. So Sister Debbie, she's my friend. She doesn't like to talk to me much, but we are still friends. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. But I thank God for her. I thank God because she's a very um, humble person and she's a very kind person. And I think probably that she would have gotten that from her, her grandmother. Uh, praise God. So we are here this evening to celebrate her life. Amen. Can we just stand for the, the reading of the word? Praise God. Something to them, you know. Nice. So we're in the book of John, right? John chapter 9. We're going to read from verses um, 1 to verse 5. All right? So it's on the projector there. If you can see, or if you have your phone or your Bible, you can follow. Amen. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? A question. Jesus answered, Neither had this man sin, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. And then verse 4 says, I must work the works of him that sent me. Why it is day? The night cometh when no man can work. And then finally Jesus said, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Could we bow our heads today? Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, God, today, Lord, for bringing us at this point, God. You know all things, Father. You are able, O oh God, to see the future, Father, what the future holds. And you know that we would have been at this juncture, God, even this evening to celebrate the life of your daughter. I pray in the name of Jesus because, God, you are the good comforter, God, the one that would comfort us, God, Father, when we are in a place of sorrow. So, God, today, I pray, God, over her family, God, uh, that they would understand that, God, that she is in uh, a better place and that they would take, oh, God, Father, uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, that sense of peace and comfort, oh, God, in their spirit. Uh, I pray even now as you minister to us, almighty God, that you would speak into our hearts and into our minds in Jesus mighty name amen and amen you may be seated for a short while praise the name of Jesus we are looking at this story very quickly we won't be long they say when the preacher said we won't be long ah my god in trouble but we will be short this evening and um, we are looking at this story and we are seeing that uh, the Bible says, as Jesus is passing by, praise God. And I want us to look at something because this story really uh, started in chapter 8. Uh, the scribes and the Pharisees, which is uh, the religious ruler of the day, and, and they would have been the religious people, and they kept challenging Jesus. Because we know even presently today, man loves religion rather than a relationship with God. That we are more devoted to a religion than a relationship with God. If I ask the question, uh, even in this house today, how many of, all the, of, of you all pray? You would say, ah, we pray. Ah, we pray at night. We pray before we have our meals. We pray after we have our meals. We pray before uh, we go to bed. We all pray. We all do different stuff. We all go to church and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and we hold on to these things daily. Matter of fact, some of you all right inside of here probably prays more than I do. 
The reality is this. Uh, when we are born to religion and not a relationship with God, uh, oftentimes we live our life in a particular way that only pleases what religion has to say to us. Because at the end of the day, you can be very religious and don't have a relationship with God. And I think for most of us, or for some of us inside of here, uh, we tend to go down that road. Uh, I don't want to really serve God, uh, but I still want to say that I believe in God. And I'm saying to us today, it's not just good enough to believe in God. Uh, because a lot of people believe in God. Matter of fact, the very devil believes that there is a God and he trembles. Uh, our mighty God. And I'm saying to us today that we have to not just uh, believe in God uh, in that sense, but we have to trust and put our lives in him. The Bible says that Jesus is passing through. He is dealing with these religious people and they are harassing Jesus. And because Jesus is making some very powerful statements. What was Jesus saying? They were saying that our father is Father Abraham. Again, religion. Because they feel as though if they associate themselves with Abraham, Father Abraham, they are okay. And sometimes in this life, we feel as though if we associate ourselves with people or things in this life, we are okay. And Jesus told these people, I am greater than Father Abraham. Matter of fact, before Father Abraham was, I am. I am before him and I am the one that rules and reigns. But, but here they are caught up in this religious position. Abraham is our father. And we feel as though that's a big thing. To be associated with someone. What happened though? Because Jesus made this a powerful statement you would think that they would just leave him and say, this man is a madman. The Bible mentions that they wanted to stone him. Oh, glory be to God. They wanted to pelt down this man because uh, uh, he is saying that I am the son of the living God. Matter of fact, I am God. And Jesus now, because he realized that these people, they are dead serious. If I don't leave this place, ah, oh, mighty God, somebody go bust my head. So Jesus had to uh, get out of it, uh, per se, and he had to hit himself, uh, uh, and he had to leave. And we just read in John chapter 9, from verses 1 to 5, and mentioned as Jesus passed by. The reality is this, or my point uh, for us this evening is this, uh, Jesus now is passing by. What was happening? Jesus was chased by these men. Uh, he was, uh, these men were looking to stone him. Uh, these men were looking uh, uh, to deal with him in a particular manner. And the Bible says that Jesus was passing by uh, and he saw this blind man. Could I say to us today uh, that the compassion of Jesus uh, is beyond the comprehension. Uh, because he had his own issues to deal with. Uh, he had his own problems. Uh, he had his own circumstances. Uh, uh, he had his own trials. Uh, uh, but yet still, Jesus found time. Uh, yet still, Jesus on his way out, uh, Jesus took time uh, uh, to deal with this blind man. Christ said to us, uh, uh, when the disciples themselves, they did not get this thing right. Uh, one time, they begin to ask, who sin? This man or his parents, because they believe uh, uh, that the man or his parents sin, uh, why he is in this state. And Jesus say, uh, neither his parents or this man sin, uh, but that the work of the Lord, the power of the Lord be demonstrated. Uh, I'm saying to us today uh, that we can be more curious than compassionate. A lot of times we are so curious of what happened or, or how did it happen or, or why did it happen. We are so curious and compassionate. You ever see in Trinidad, one of the major reasons where you have a, a lot of traffic jams is that someone just needs to be in an accident. Oh, glory be to God. You realize that so many people now with slow down, they are not coming out their vehicle, my brother, but they with slow down and everybody curious. 
what happened? I wonder if this one was right or that one was right. I wonder if the person was drunk. I wonder if this person was uh, probably they were smoking something. And everybody just started a cruise. And the traffic is piling up because everybody is curious. But when we would see when people now become compassionate, when they will begin to come out of their vehicles and begin to assist the situation, we just want to be curious or to find out what is happening to people, but we are not so compassionate. Ah, glory be to God. We want to speak a word for our sister and send her off today because I believe that one of the things that she would want is that her family would begin to live in, in that place where they are compassionate, where they would look out for one another. Ah, glory be to God. That's the word of God for us today and to the family that we would look out for each other because so many times that we don't really talk or we don't really relate, we don't really find out how this one is going or how that one is going. Ah, but here comes, oh mighty God, mama, and she dies now and we all come in under one gathering. We all begin to cry and bawl and scream and all that kind of stuff. We all begin to greet each other and when everything is done, we leave this place, go back to our own ways, our own ways and nobody really cares about each other in a serious way. But we're just finding out about each other's children. I wonder what this one is doing with her life. You know, I hear this one, she pregnant. You know, I hear this one, she got, uh, uh, she made a jail. I hear this one now is that, and you find out what auntie child is, and this one found what his sister child doing, and that next one, I don't know what his next child doing, and all that sort of chaos and bacchanal and all that kind of story there. And the reality is this, uh, we must have compassion for each other. Stop being so curious. If you realize someone needs help or they are in need of, of something, why don't you just, uh, uh, mighty God, uh, extend yourself and say, how could I help? But sometimes we are in the background there. This is family, right? We are family instead of here, right? Family sit down in a corner laughing at each other. That good for she. Let she take that long time that coming and she prays she wicked. That good for here. And we begin to talk all these various talk. And you swear it's some kind of enemy or some kind of stranger that we are talking about. Is the family? Good, good family. Talking about no pumpkin vine family. You know, and good family. You are talking and you wish evil upon. And you wish that they this and they that. And, and all that kind of stuff there. Jesus now addressed the matter. And Jesus is more concerned uh, about the man's situation. Uh, he is compassionate rather than curious. My word for us this eve is that we have to take stock of ourselves uh, and understand there are certain attitudes and, and there are certain characters and, and certain behaviors that, that we have to come out of. How long you gonna live so? How long you gonna live so? Granny Dino, you still gonna live so? And even death at times cannot even bring us to that place where we don't understand that, you know what, I need to change my attitude. We have to stop in this place being uh, so emotional. We emotional enough to cry for granny. But we are not emotional enough to look out for each other. You're fooling yourself. Something is right in your heart. Because the reality is this, that once your heart is in the right place, once your heart is for love, uh, genuine love, uh, once your heart is compassionate, you will put aside some of these petty things that we go through as family at times. We will begin to forgive. We will begin to love. We will begin to show compassion. And we would say to ourselves, you know what? She did me that, you know, but you know what? I forgive her. She probably didn't know better. And the reality is that if she continues to live so, or if he continues to live so, I am not going to live like that. I must be different. We have to determine to be different and make the first move. 
Jesus made the first move. This man needed help. I'm here simply to tell you is that time is of the essence. I am here to tell you that we ought to stop wasting time. Because time is running out. Whether you believe it or not, time is running out. We need to work it out. Work out the time that we have on this earth by showing compassion, by showing love, by showing unity and togetherness and put aside the things that would have separated us, uh, put aside the things that would have caused division uh, among ourselves and we must live uh, in that place of love and unity. But so many times we are in that relaxed mode, just chilling. Just relax it because you believe that you have everything or time um, in your back pocket that whenever you decide, uh, then things would happen. But it's not so. I said when something, when time is of the essence, it's when something must be done immediately. So we are saying this evening, the word of God is telling us, put away your nonsense, your stupidness. Your bad behavior immediately. No time to be wasting or, or taking time for this because you don't know when your number will call. And some of us inside here, you're looking like Lara Lara too. 